with all my heart. That's my answer. My wife's prayer this morning. Does he still love me? Oh. The thing that's always made me different <clears throat> is the heavenly etiquette I practice. I'm usually very, very cordial with people. It's how I was raised and what I was taught. To really understand everything because there has been something in my heart I haven't been able to really address and deal with so all I can do is talk about it right and usually I'm pretty selfless and I don't care about myself and everything is a mission I never looked at her or her life as that. It was, um, well, today's our one year anniversary of knowing each other in the flesh this time. The fact that I know that would testify how much I love her and wouldn't fight with her unless I did. So I don't usually fight with people. I'm praying. So first it was her well-being that I was really concerned with and um Who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house leads down to death and her paths to the dead. So. There was something I was praying on. There we are. Let us swallow them alive like Sheol and whole like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious possessions. We shall fill our houses with spoil. So she is, was, and always will be the most precious thing in my life. And I was praying about it we finally got her out of show. And to me, Let's bind up your wounds here, baby. Let's bind up your wounds here. Um, from the father perspective, because I'm three and one. We've already talked about all these things. And then we always ended up in a, uh, <clears throat> I have no idea what to do. Um, thought process because I feel her emotions she feels mine 
And my whole thing was, let's just be happy. Let's, there's a season for this, season for that, right? And I had to um, be able to speak justly and truthfully to help her understand herself first. <clears throat> Otherwise, down the road, <clears throat> Her uh, reflex is to push away love because she's never had it. Mine has been, um, I am love, but I've never uh, received it. So you have to take it to the heavenly realms. For her to understand how special she is. So that, that was the whole point. And. Hold on. Let me put on my father hat here. But you are those who have continued with me in my trials, and I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my father bestowed one upon me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And then having to uh, be so by the book and line up with scripture so that she could never say, well, if it was really him, he would have done this. Or if it was really him, just the, if it's really him, uh, constant having to uh, hear her prayers, then go out and put confirmation in front of her. The whole point of God bringing a marriage together is to give you the confidence that she was lacking in really anyone and proving that I loved her and love her and will always love her, be in love with her, that it is a covenant marriage <clears throat> and that I'll stand by her like I promised. And then I show my love, <clears throat> my love. So I'm drinking my coffee. People kept giving me alcohol yesterday. I know <clears throat> that I don't do anything unless the Holy Spirit tells me to, and I don't say anything unless the Holy Spirit tells me to. So I even had to um, <clears throat> start talking about Lilith in order to understand a lot of things. So I'll take it back there, hold on. All right, so my wife is bearing fruit now. And he brought out the king's son, put the crown on him, and gave him the testimony. They made him king and anointed him, and they clapped their hands and said, Long live the king. And my wife helped me with so much that for me, as I speak it, it's done. It overshadows and erases 
the um, hurts that I have. Because you can't be in a marriage unless you're willing to get hurt. And the biggest thing is you don't always have to take control. It's okay to just be protected, loved, and appreciated for who you are. So I'm trying to, uh, and what I'm doing is lighten her life up. And it took a lot of effort and meticulous precision to um, let her witness, believe, and understand how much I love her. And always will. And a lot of it, the way I'll be able to tell if someone doesn't mean what they're saying is I'll say something and when I'm saying it, it'll be like a split second. I don't really mean this. This is not what I really want. And then we just go at it, right? I'm not like that with anybody else. So it was a long transition of... Um, this life I lived alone and I hate confusion and I was very very confused for a very very long time and I got a taste of what she was dealing with for 17 years so that I could sit down and um help rather than judge. And it, um, <clears throat> it always came down to a promise I made 2,000 years ago and before that and how we started and we were scared of each other. Not the power to try and hurt each other, just um, the effect we could have on each other. And all these barriers looking at the entire situation, I was just like, Oh, come on. <laughs> For a little bit, I was, I was just like, I can't. What did I? Not what did I get myself into as my usual. <clears throat> just, um, why is your life like this? It was my thought process for a long time, you know, I was, And then um, just not wanting to see her suffer. And trusting God that the Holy Spirit knows 
what we're doing. And being in the dark and pretty much um, blind every single day, like, okay, just, so I was just like, okay, we're gonna get past this someday. I'm just waiting for that day. And we're here. Okay. I got confirmation. So to understand the switching back and forth, <clears throat> I had to remember Eve for a second. And then God uses everything for his purpose, for our testimonies and things like that. And, um, Just one moment. <clears throat> Calm down, woman. Okay. You'll have to forgive me. I sat down in a couple houses that were a little dark to me, so I'm gonna have to uh, take this off for a moment. scared of me is the biggest thing and then um, in the spiritual realm all these things I know would scare a lot of people and then trying to share that with her I always wanted to have something special about me that she'd be attracted to and eventually fall in love with your beloved gone, O fairest among women? Where has your beloved turned aside that we may seek him with you? I have taken off my robe. How can I put it on again? I have washed my feet. How can I defile them? My beloved put his hand by the latch of the door, and my heart yearned for him. I arose to open for my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh, on the handles of the lock. I opened for my beloved, but my beloved, okay. but it basically means, well, how can I go back um, to a life without her? And that's always been her fear, too. All right, put on your sun crown. protection and then um, the special thing about me and my wife is we both have a spirit that is light so when we're both happy we're like super mega happy cloud nine and that's what I wanted to keep and the spirit's telling me she understands everything now so I'm never going to speak about it again what I had to deal with was something that I knew a long time ago 
And what I didn't want was if you put someone in enough pain, they'll do whatever you want them to do. And I was trying to tell her, I'm not putting you in pain, I'm healing you. Everything you prayed for, it was a lot. <clears throat> but I wanted to be the one, and I am. Um, so today's our anniversary. And I'm removing the fear and the indecision that comes with getting yourself stuck. But I've been waiting for you a long time. So let me make this um, special for you because all of the things we've been through and how our holidays have gone and everything I said I was going to make up to you. I'm doing right now. And I'm trying to do this as uh, honorably and <laughs> addressing the things that need to be addressed without uh, <clears throat> making anybody not understand how amazing you are. No one really knows how to be married, and you're more upset with yourself than I am with you. I can guarantee you that. What I'm doing right now, beloved, is I'm speaking to her in the spirit, and feeling exactly how she feels, listening to her prayers, reading her heart. And we've both had this uh, mentality, we are so close. And that's still our mentality. And it took a long time for me to get used to confusion and I can't see any marriage not having confusion through the ups and downs is how I feel about it. I don't know. I know how to get clarity on big decisions. And it was the big decisions that really um, had the hugest impact on our marriage. So we learned. Okay. And then um, last night, Lilith started talking to me again. I was okay. And what people don't understand is there's a misconception that she got banished or something like that. I, She didn't get banished. How do I put this? She's a very strong spirit. <clears throat> and uh,
Hold on. These came from uh, that place and it's just not gonna be worth it to keep them. So let me go throw these away and I'll be right back. So that ends that. Then I gave my other ones to uh, the homeless guy under the bridge. See, seriously, I have no shoes. And then using my words, my words are a spirit just constantly firing off at all these demons around her just to have her back for one day. So that's love, my love. Behold, you are handsome, my beloved, yes, pleasant. Also, our bed is green. And what that means is our bed is perfect, and she laid in it. I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. Like a lily among thorns, so is my love. <clears throat> oh, um... Yes.